There's a phrase I heard once that goes something along the lines of, time you enjoy wasting isn't time wasted. And while there is a nugget of wisdom in that phrase, it's not entirely true. See, we often waste our time, be it with TV, Twitter, video games, and usually it's just a form of pacification that's later met with regret. Because either your conscious or your subconscious mind knows that you should have been doing something more high priority, of more importance than the thing that you actually ended up doing. Now, I don't mean to play armchair psychologist, but this seems like a fairly easy fix to me. Just do what you should be doing, what you know you should be doing, even though you don't want to do it. I've been thinking about this a lot recently because, very recently, within the past few weeks, we finally bought our first house after years and years of saving, and it's a cesspit. I mean, literally it is like a cesspit. Prepare to wretch. This is the very nice bathroom that we are likely going to rip out, I imagine. Not sure how many murders have taken place here, but yeah, pretty vile. And there's it's like a hole under the bath there, which fills you with confidence. So I'll try not to fall through the floor. And then you can see here a lot of chipboard on the floor. But we've since found out since we bought the place that they've had animals in here. We couldn't work out how this has become so water damaged when the ceiling is spotless. Old fashioned, but spotless. And yeah, I'm sure this place is covered in animal waste and God knows what else. So that's what I'm on with. Anyway, this video isn't just an excuse to show you our piss-ridden abode, impressive though it is. It's more a video about burning the candle at both ends and feeling as though you don't have the time for photography, but managing to find the time anyway. We're obviously going to be renovating the house, shocking as it might be that we don't want to live in it in that condition. And I have multiple jobs, a YouTube channel, I'm trying to get this YouTube channel off the ground, so... I understand the plight of feeling as though you don't have the time to do things that you want to do, like photography in this instance. And you'll often hear stupid platitudes like, oh you've just got to make time. Like we're gods now are we? We just get to make time? We all have a finite amount of time and it's how we spend that time that I'm concerned with. Well I thought I'd offer some tidbits of information that you might find handy if you're in a similar predicament to what I am. Maybe they'll be of use to you. Maybe you'll just roll your eyes into the back of your head and think I'm just stating the obvious. Let's hold hands and find out together. When dreaming up solutions to this problem, I was thinking about the concept of the best camera being the one that you have on you at the time. And we all have a camera phone in our pockets. It's easy to scoff at camera phones, but the fact remains that camera technology within phones has come a hell of a long way in just a short space of time. And if your choice is between getting the shot and not getting the shot, then surely you'd just rather choose to take the shot even if it is merely on a phone. Especially when we're blessed with the ability to add filters and even shoot RAW on phones now and edit them in Lightroom or whatever. Similarly, you could just carry around a point and shoot with you everywhere you go, plenty of capable small little point and shoots out there. Or if you carry around a bag with you everywhere you go, then tying up a small camera body with a prime lens might be the way to go. Whatever the gear you're using to shoot is, having it on you at all times is a good way to never miss out on a shot. Another tactic I try to employ is trying to be more intentional with your time. Don't just sit and stare at the TV watching something that you're not even enjoying. Don't scroll through social media and become more and more depressed than you were even before you ever picked up your phone. Maybe only have social media on your desktop and delete them from your phone so you're not tempted to go on there every minute of the day. I'm not really much of a social media guy, although I probably should be if I'm trying to get this YouTube channel off the ground. I just like doing life in hard mode, apparently. Anyway, keeping off social media is easy for me because I'm like a woodland hermit that would rather live in a shed than be around other people. Even virtually. But it is worthwhile keeping track of how much time you spend on your phone doing absolutely nothing. Maybe give yourself an allotted time frame during every day to do social media and answer comments and emails and all that type of thing. 
and hopefully that will help you to feel less fragmented and fractious. You're getting everything done all in one stint, then you don't have to think about it for the rest of the day. If you're feeling frantic, then you're a lot less productive. Managing your time and spending your time more efficiently is the type of thing that'll change your life. I never thought I'd be on YouTube trying to tell people how to change their lives. Bit pretentious, isn't it? An obvious one that we're all bad at, including myself, is getting up early. And this is particularly potent when it comes to photography. There's the beautiful morning light and all that stuff, but getting up earlier in the morning actually just gives you more hours in the day. I suppose staying up late can be productive as well, as long as you actually use that time to write bad YouTube scripts like this one. But if you're getting up for work anyway, then why not get up a bit earlier and take the dog for a walk with your camera or something like that? You could do something like walking to work, even though it takes you an hour to walk to work, especially easy during the summer months, and obviously you would take your camera with you. Or maybe that early morning can be the time to answer social media stuff and comments and emails and all that, which will free up time during your break at work to maybe go out and do some photography on the streets. I don't know, I'm just spitballing ideas. Point being that the longer you are awake, the more time you physically have to spend on photography. Another concept that I've heard about is something called perfection paralysis. And I have no idea if that's something that I've subconsciously heard somewhere else, or if it's something that I've dreamt up myself and I deserve some kind of award for such a concept. What I mean by the phrase perfection paralysis is that if you're anything like me, you don't even want to start the thing, be it photography or YouTube or whatever, if it's not going to be perfect right off the bat. After all, if it's not going to be perfect, why even bother? You have standards after all. The thing with that is, no one ever does anything perfectly, immediately, right off the bat. It just looks like they do in books and online because you're only seeing the end result after hours and weeks and years of turmoil. So dreaming up excuses like that, and I'm guilty of it myself, is yet another waste of time. You just need to start doing the thing no matter how clunky it is and be willing to make mistakes along the way. Every mistake you make is an improvement, or at least a potential improvement if you're honest with yourself, and that's how you end up at this so-called utopian perfection that we're all aiming for. I mean, look at this YouTube channel. It's a total train wreck. Train wreck's better, innit? That then makes me think of the issue that arises once I actually do get some time to shoot. And that's that the local area is boring, a topic that's been covered ad nauseum. I don't have time to nip over to Iceland for a couple of weeks, so I have to shoot locally, which is something that we all feel, and probably could be a topic all by itself. One way to tackle this is the mentality of your local area. It might not be interesting to you because you've been there all your life, but think of the people a few countries over that aren't used to your architecture or your geography, the cars that you drive, the way people dress, things like that. For instance, I like watching Andrew from the Good Camera YouTube channel because he lives in the middle of the desert and that type of environment could not be much further away from the luscious green England where I live. Just because it's boring and typical for you doesn't mean it's boring for everyone else. Another way to tackle the boredom is to try changing up the way you shoot. Try new things, it could be macro photography, instant film photography, using a longer lens and trying to get closer into your subjects instead of the typical wide shots you're used to taking. Change things up in your photography and stop justifying wasting time. I'm guilty of it as well, but I'm still here silently judging you. Maybe you can only grab half an hour for photography here and there. Fair enough. Do some at home then. Shoot plants, the birds in the garden, grain on the table, macro photography, try some product photography. You can set yourself a project to document your family growing through the years. Where there's a will there's a way and we can all find little snippets of time for our photography. We just have to find that small niche and pursue it. Anyway, those are just a few ideas. I'm not saying that I'm able to commit to all these musings myself. I'm more of a preacher than a practicer. We all know good advice when we hear it, and we're all pretty damn good at ignoring it too. And I'm under no illusion that the three of you that are left watching this video towards the end are not going to listen to a word I've said here today. Rendering this another pointless video, which means this recording is a total waste of time.
We've come full circle.